Hey you guys, this is Raphael from Shiloh Rex. Man, I hope you're having the best day you ever had in your life. And I had somebody the other day, he said, you talk too much, you talk about the guns. If you don't like the way I talk, go watch another video. God bless you, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Because this is just me, and I'm just me, and I ain't never wanted to be nobody but me, but a better version of me. Today, we're going to talk about a little gun with a whole lot of coolness to it. The Colt Firearms Company, Hartford, Connecticut, one of the most uh, impactful names you will ever hear in the firearms industry, uh, had a amazing history. One of their neatest guns, I think that they ever did, they made about 40,000 of them. And in Colt terms, that's not a huge amount of guns. Uh, like the armies and navies of the Civil War, they made over 100,000 of each. So this one is kind of interesting. This is it. This is the Colt Model 1855 Revolver. It's officially, uh, or not officially, collectors have always referred to it as the Root Revolver, R-O-O-T, uh, the Root Revolver. And it gets that name from one of the designers of Colt that was very famous, Elijah K. Root, R-O-O-T. I talk a lot, I use a lot of words, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I read that, I that just chapped my butt. I thought, huh, if you've seen any of these videos, you know I talk a lot. That's all right. I like it. I don't care. That's why we got chocolate and vanilla. Uh, they made these guns from 1855 till 1870. And during that time, made a, a round 40,000. The, they made them two sizes. They made them with a bore size uh, of a 28 caliber, meaning 28 one hundredths of an inch. They made about 30,000 of those, and they serial numbered those one to 30,000. The larger version, the 31 caliber, they made uh, around 14,000 is what they say. Serial numbered those separately, one to 14,000. So you need to look for size, and you need to look... Uh, uh, at the serial numbers because they didn't make them till 1870. And if you collect Civil War and earlier guns, you don't want one that goes past uh, in production. If you collect guns and that's it, you're covered. But 1855, 1870, Elisha K. Root, the uh, very distinctive guns because it's the only uh, gun of the time that Colt made with a solid frame. Now, what does a solid frame mean? The uh, solid frame means that there's a frame that goes all the way around the cylinder like that. The earlier, uh, or the other guns, all of the other guns of Colts had a open top uh, with just the frame going underneath. This version was actually a lot better design. It followed what Remington did and it was easier to load. Uh, the <laughs> These guns, though, the cylinder and action actually rotate on a pin that goes through the back of it like this. <laughs> if you are not mechanically inclined, and I am not mechanically inclined, never, ever under any circumstances take one of these guns apart. I did one time after uh, trying for an hour or two to get it back together and uh, having to take some uh, uh, liquid... Uh, tranquilizers, I, I took a couple of beers and I was like, I still can't get that thing back together. And so I sent it to my gunsmith and that was the last, first and only one of these I ever took apart because it was, oh, it was a pain in the butt. Uh, so that, that leads to one thing that I was wanting to tell you guys about. The mechanics on these, if they don't function, it's a very hard gun to get anybody to work on because they are a pain in the butt. They got a lot of stuff going on in a little bitty space. Uh, so check to be sure that the action works. You, uh, if it doesn't, it affects these a lot uh, because it's not an easy gun. Uh, a regular Colt Army, Colt Navy, they make gazillions of parts for, drop them in, do, it to, do the timing work on them, and a gunsmith can work on those very, fairly easily. These, not the case at all. So how can you see besides the frame that it's a very distinctive gun? It's the placement of the hammer. On the right side of the frame, they uh, call it a side hammer because instead of being in the center of the gun, like a regular Colt Army, Colt Navy, it's on the side and it, it strikes the cylinder from the side instead of the center. 
This one, oh, it's a beautiful gun. <laughs> it's got fine look to it. Got a lot of the original factory colors, the original bluing. Uh, most of the time, they will have octagonal barrels. There are some, there are a lot of variations in these. In Flaterman's guide, he mentions that there are seven major uh, category variations with a lot of sub variations. So only 40,000, but they were doing a progression on them all along. But octagonal barrel on most, round barrel on some, barrel lengths can vary. Uh, some of them will have a fluted cylinder, some of them will have a round cylinder. The fluted cylinder most of the time will have a patent date in the, in the center of one of the flutes. The uh, round barrels uh, most of the time will have a cylinder seam. Uh, so a lot of things. If you like variations, a Colt Root Revolver Model 1855 was made for you. There are uh, no trigger guard on these guns. So it's, it's a real distinctive gun. Small gun, uh, 28 and 31 caliber. Not a lot of them made compared to most Colts. Uh, so it's a, it's a neat gun if you get a chance. If you go into Shiloh Relics, as of today, this gun is for sale and available. Uh, there are also a lot of other handguns on there. Hope you find one or 12 that suits your fancy. Uh, gonna be adding a lot more. <laughs> and I, again, I apologize that I haven't been able to do as many of these videos, but thanks to you guys and your ordering, I just hadn't had time. And that's a beautiful problem to have, but I still feel like I let you guys down sometimes because I like to talk and I wanna show you these relics and uh, gonna be bringing you a lot more in the future. Uh, I heard something the other day that has stuck in my mind. Uh, we were talking to, uh, I talked to a therapist and I talked to him because everybody needs somebody to talk to. And sometimes it helps to talk to somebody that isn't in the know of everything in your life. Friends and family, a lot of times know way too much about what's going on and you can't get a impartial opinion. So I was talking with, with uh, my therapist the other day and she said something and it just struck me and I thought about it a lot. She said that uh, putting boundaries in place are a good thing because I'm bad about letting some people that I love run over me. So I put the boundaries in place and she said that uh, the people that are offended by boundaries are generally those that are used to running over them. I'm gonna say it one more time. I'm gonna say it a little slower because you need to let that sink in. The people that are offended by boundaries that you create to protect yourself are generally those people that are used to running over those boundaries. And that, that's a lot of, that's a lot of soak in right there. Um, but I say that because uh, I've noticed today in today's world that so many people want to, uh, they've got that Facebook mentality. They think that they are the most correct and most right person in the world and that they have the right to say and do whatever they want to anybody because their opinion is the only one that matters. I don't get it, but a lot of people evidently feel that way. So uh, I say that to, uh, one, let you know that people shouldn't run over you. And two, that uh, just because they think it's right doesn't make it right. Just because I think it's right doesn't make it right. Uh, you need to listen, you need to learn, we need to talk to each other. But uh, if you are one of those people that feel like certain people take advantage of you because you do have a kind, gentle nature, uh, remember, Boundaries protect you uh, and don't be afraid to use them. So with that said, I hope you guys know how much I appreciate you. I hope you know that I'm very thankful for my life. I'm very thankful for my family. I'm very thankful for my business and you guys have made that business a strong business. I hope y'all have the best day that you have ever had in your life. Remember to tell those that you love that you love them. And I hope to be back with you many, many times to come. Have a great day.